into the Jonathan Ross show. Come on, let's relax. Now, I'm going to start the show by apologising. I'm going to say sorry. I haven't done anything, but it seems to be the thing to do this week. <laughs> did you see Nick Clegg's apology about tuition fees? Here's what YouTube did with it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm so, so sorry. There's no easy way to say I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's racing up the charts. There you go. I would say to him, don't give up your day job, Nick, but it's probably not his decision anymore anyway. <laughs> uh, but imagine if the Lib Dems did form a band. What do they call themselves? I think No Direction or The Unwanted. They're the top three names. <laughs> Nick Clegg wasn't the only politician saying sorry this week. Tory MP Andrew Mitchell also had to apologise. He's denying it, but a policeman is claiming he called him a pleb while trying to get his bike out of Downing Street. A pleb. People are trying to make up the toys that they're posh, they're privileged, they're snooty. Give the guy a break, he was only trying to get home on his bike. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a packed show tonight, so let's get right on with it. And as I said already, thank you to No Doubt, ladies and gentlemen. They're here on... <laughs> That's a great sound. It's lovely to see him back. Uh, let's see who else is on my show tonight. My first guest is one of our favourite comedians. It is the fabulous Mr Jack D, ladies and gentlemen. There he is. The housewife's favourite. <laughs> um, I don't know if this is true. Jack, I read that you've been doing hypnotherapy to relax. Is that right? Yeah, uh, yeah, I do. I, I, I have a, had a long history of, of needing to relax. Wow, wow. <laughs> and uh, hypnotherapy is the way forward. So, so you're feeling sleepy? Even though you look like grumpy, you're feeling sleepy? <laughs> Jack D, ladies and gentlemen, there he is, he's on the show. My next guest, and this is exciting, because he'll be chatting and he'll be performing, he is the world's greatest street magician. It is the man known simply as Dynamo. <laughs> Young Dynamo. He's a big star now. You know, when I was young, I don't know, a street magician was just a polite way of saying pickpocket. <laughs> well, you're not young anymore. I just realised we don't have enough time for all our guests on the show this evening. <laughs> Dunbar, you're going to do a big trick for us tonight, aren't you? Yeah, I'm going to try something, and you know I love you, Jonathan. Dynamo, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> also on the show, uh, this is exciting, one of the country's finest young actresses, it is Emma Watson. <laughs> hey, Emma. Looking lovely. Hi. Emma, of course, famously played Hermione in Harry Potter. Uh, but she's moving away now from the whole world of fantasy and magic, which is why we've sat uh, in between Dynamo the Magician and Grumbledore. <laughs> uh, great to see you again, Emma. Thank you for coming on the show. They're the guests tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, because you're a magician. <laughs> OK. You know, Dynamo, no pressure, but you are doing this in front of Hermione. That is, that's actually burnt my eyes out, I can't see <laughs> that. Amazing. It is, it's amazing. It's got a bit of pocket fluff on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not, not trying to do that to fish. <laughs> Let's get my first guest out. Here's a ray of sunshine wrapped up in a grumpy old sod. It's the marvellous Mr Jack D. <laughs> Here. <laughs> Jack D, sit down, Jack. Well, uh, that was that was impressive. That thing with the goldfish. Well, yeah. Um, oh, my eyes are sore though. Oh, did, was it really? You weren't that close there was to the no flame. No warning or anything. Just don't come in and start complaining immediately. Well, you know, you can't just throw that at people when they're preparing to come on for an interview, and then you know, a big angle grinder goes off in your face. <laughs> um, so, congratulations. It was your birthday recently, wasn't it? Was it your 51st birthday? Yeah, yeah, on Monday, yeah. Congratulations. How old are you? I am also 51. Thank you. Did you do anything to mark the occasion at all? Did your family do anything special for you? We had, yeah, we had, we had a, we got a takeaway curry. Oh, okay. I, got a, I got a parking ticket. 
<laughs> so that was it, you know, and they gave me, obviously I got presents, and, you know, it was, you know, regular, but not, not, oh, not hey. well, Nothing big? Oh, nothing big. it was my party, my, my birthday, okay. you know, but it was like, yeah, I had the family around, that was it, it was good. So the family, so you've got, uh, how many children? I've got four children. Four children. Uh, yeah. You and the wife are still together, you've been together for many, many years now, how long's the... We've been uh, married now for 23 years. Wow, 23 congratulations, years. Been around that's pretty good, 23 years. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty good. Is it, uh... Is there still romance in the relationship? Do you still go on dates, that kind of thing? Yeah, we well, go on dates. I mean, I've always been romantic with Jane. We went away uh, recently um, and we stayed in a... I said, Jane, come on, we'll go away for a night. We stayed in a boutique hotel, you know, one of these... Little smart hotels. Little yeah. smart hotels Designer. on the coast. Done up by this couple um, who'd spent, you know, four, four years or something doing it up. And they... We went in the... The bathroom was like what you know a wet room where it's not a proper bathroom at all. Where so it's a shower. The whole thing you can you can get everywhere wet. Everything is, everything okay. gets wet. There's no demarcation between the shower and the toilet and the basin. Yeah. It's and it's a wet room. This is the invention of some lazy bloody plumber who <laughs> just screwed up the bathroom and said, "Oh, this is the latest thing." <laughs> so I said, "Joe, yeah, no, it's good. This is what they've done. They've made the wet room." And uh, we, so we go to bed, and I, then we can hear that the water is dripping in the bathroom under the system. <laughs> so I go into the... I'd had a bit to drink, actually, to be honest. I had, you know, go into this wet room. We'd had a shower and everything was soaked. You know, all the toilet paper's all soggy now. <laughs> so I said, I'll fix it. And I, uh, I try to lift the lid off the system, right? And it won't quite come, so I thought, obviously, oh, it needs a bit more force. And I just went like that, and it just flipped up into the end, just started spinning around, great big porcelain lid, and just smashed in pieces all over the, all over the floor. Right? <laughs> Bits of broken porcelain everywhere. And, <laughs> and by now, uh, I'm, 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 needing, I'm needing a pee. And Jane says, I'm going to call the manager, don't call the manager. I'm needing a pee. And there's just a hole in the middle of the bathroom, right? <laughs> I don't want to go in, I'd bare feet, I'd cut my feet to shreds. So I stood in the doorway, like this, <laughs> trying to aim for, for the hole like that. <laughs> and all these broken bathroom bits all over. And I'm peeing all over. And I just look around, and the manager was standing there. <laughs> and I had no Jane had just called him up. And the next day, there was such a bad atmosphere, I've got to say. <laughs> well, well, you know. And I said, I'm, I'll be on tour next, and I'll be coming through in November. We're fully booked. Didn't want me back. <laughs> so. Well, you are on tour, though. You're on tour again now. Yeah, I'm on tour, yeah. Well, congratulations. This is the first time in how many years? Uh, six years. I, I decided to go back on tour because someone has to continue the magic of 2012, I felt. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We had the Jubilee and we had the Olympics yeah. and we had the Paralympics and it was all great, but then there was a lull. Yeah, and yeah. I thought, I'm going to go on tour. I'm going I'm, <laughs> I'm to keep this spirit going. I'm going to keep the flame burning. <laughs> well, you, are, you are like the Olympic flame going around the country. I am yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. Personified. Uh, how are you finding it now? Because you haven't been on tour for a while. And, of course, you've been in the business for a long while. Uh, it's coming up for, like, 30 years. Yeah. You've been doing stand-up. So it's a pretty different world out there now. You've got all the new young comedians and, and I guess the material. A lot of it is about modern stuff. They're doing gags about Twitter and Facebook and lots of stuff which wasn't around when you first started. Yeah, I know. But they, you know they, I mean, I do do Twitter. I don't do... I don't, I don't really do routines about Twitter, but what always gets me is the people on Twitter... Cos the people on Twitter, you say, oh, I'm on tour. And they say, oh, where are you on tour? I said, well, I'm not going to list all the towns, am I? I mean, I can't... I'm not even going to come on this show and list all the towns. I'm not doing nothing, I'm doing... It's a whole list of towns. People say, where are you on tour? Honestly, I think, if you can't Google it and find out, don't even come. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be wasting your time. You won't, you won't understand the show. If you don't know how to Google stuff, don't even come. <laughs> You've got to be very careful with that stuff. Uh, but you don't mind, you don't mind uh, fans talking about you, because now it's very immediate, isn't it? When you do a gig or talk something, immediately people are saying whether they like you or not. They're yeah. critical, they're, they're sharing their thoughts on it. Well, I think that's good, isn't it? I mean, that's, that's, a, that's an OK thing. I, don't, I generally don't sort of read feedback until the next day or something. I might, like, scan over it, but I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not kind of pouring over it. You'd have to be so very sad to sort of sit in your dressing room and oh. go, you know, uh, I, I, I don't, I don't, it's not what I do to relax, you know. Ha, well, so what do you do to relax, then? Have you got any hobbies, What are we talking about? I do hypnotherapy. Yeah, you actually do that, for real? Yeah, of course I do. Well, I, don't, I wouldn't well, mention like, it if I don't do like it. Well, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say, come on, let's talk about something I don't know anything but, about. But, <laughs> I wouldn't say you do... Sorry, it's something... I just pick it out of the air, <laughs> like, a, like a goldfish. <laughs> <laughs> there are different types of hypnotherapy, and I did the one where, uh, you know, they regress you. That was a long, long time ago before I... I'm a very good hypnotherapist now, but the one where they regress you and, and he, he wanted to... He immediately wanted to stop seeing me because he regressed me and, um, this... Seriously, this is embarrassing, I'm not proud of this, but, it, you know, when you... I thought it was going to be Henry VIII or someone. Yeah, they, they say who you were in a past life. Yeah, or you Henry speak... VIII yeah. 
Or, uh, yeah, I don't mind if it's a little urchin boy or something, you know. Like, nice little boy in the street. Yeah, ch chimney sweep, I might, I might have been, I don't know. So who were you? I was a, I, turns out I was an SS officer. Oh. <laughs> and, um... <laughs> And he said, I can't see you anymore after this, let's say, because he was Jewish and he was really <laughs> offended by that, you know. And so, listen, it's not real, this. It doesn't actually happen. It's not, not really true. Well, why do you think you said under oh, hypnotherapy that I'd you were... I've seen Schindler's List a couple of nights oh, before or something like that. And it was just in my mind. It came out. I was... I don't know what. I was talking in a silly accent and he... Well, a German accent is fun to do. Yeah, I know, but real SS didn't have a German accent. They just spoke German. So well, it proves hey. it's not true, is it? <laughs> Uh, you've got a new show. What's this new show? It's called Don't Sit in the Front Row. Don't Sit in the Front this Row. This like a very different kind it's of thing. It's on Sky Atlantic okay. and uh, it's uh, starting in October, 29th of October. Okay. And this is a, a show where, it's, it's un unlike a normal panel show, uh, you've got comedians uh, talking to members of the audience and uh, so they're not just doing material or stuff they've thought of before, they have to actually think on their feet. And it's, it's good fun, it's a great show. We get to know members of the public through the show. So uh, the person in the front row who's provided the, the most sort of raw comedy material is the winner of the show. So you get to meet some very different people. Get to meet yeah. some very different people and, okay. uh, yeah, no, it, it is genuinely good fun to yeah. do. I had my doubts about it before. Okay, that's on right. Sky Atlantic, it's starts uh, 20, 29th? 29th, 9, 9 o'clock. Uh, well, I make jokes about it whenever I see Jack, about you, you being, you know, looking grumpy. And I know you play up to it a bit, but you, you've always had a face which is a little downcast, haven't you? I mean, it... I but naturally, you always look a little bit like you are miffed about something. Listen, I've just always, even at school, I used to get into trouble because the teachers hated me. It's, you know, what's the matter with you? I said, nothing's the matter with me. And they, you know, we had a, have a row with the teacher about, oh, we're going on a school trip, we're going to Isle of Wight for the day. And I said, well, honestly, what is the point? <laughs> because you're gonna be, we're all going to be on the bus for three hours or something, and you get there, you're going to have your packed lunch, and you come back, and, you know... And they and they would they would do, I was you know I was only six at the time but I could yeah. see that that just didn't make sense. Well, you were very mature. Uh, but have you ever thought about surgery or any kind of uh, inter? <laughs> no, but I don't mean so kindly because there's a new thing you might want to try. Uh, there's a device that? you can have which we have here, which uh, is meant to. T it's basically I think it's like non-intrusive facelift for people who who want to get their cheeks back up and all this. Because as we get older, our faces are both going south, and everyone, mm. you know. So rather than get nipped and tucked, you can do this. If we bring it out, we have a uh, Guillaume from the clinic has the uh, items there. And this is uh, what are these called again? These oh things. God. This is the pro lift. The pro lift. Thank you. Your French accent is marvelous, Guillaume. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, okay, this is now they're both turned on. I've got the control here, okay, and this will work for both of them. And what you do is don't touch the metal plates there because they're, they're live, aren't they? They will shock. What? They will shock. It gives they're you a live. gentle electric shock. I'll, I'll put it on. You put on Jack's. You can bend it like this and you sort of put it. Is it hurt? Yeah, I, I'm well, nervous. I, I, right, you put I, it on there. This is a genuine oh, thing oh. and it's meant to help. Right, they're not, they're not electric yet, but these are going to give us very gentle, <laughs> for real. <laughs> William, thank you, William. No, Merci not beaucoup. Too much, not too okay. much. Right, so I'm going to turn this on now. We will feel it, but you're meant to leave your mouth loose, and it will. You will feel it, and it will lift up your smile. Okay. Right. Right. Here we go. Keep your mouth loose. I feel like oh. I think. <laughs> oh. You feel it? Oh, it's horrible. It just stings. <laughs> oh. Oh, it's like having a stroke. It's horrible. <laughs> I've got... Oh, my filling is... I'm filling it in my filling. Yeah. Mm. Oh. Mm. Oh, it's so horrible. I'm going to move that one away from my... Oh, uh, you chicken out. Don't no, pe because don't I've got a filling there. there. Oh. 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 It's like that thing on Green Mile. Oh. 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 That was horrible, wasn't it? That was seriously unpleasant. But I feel... I feel kind of... Know. My cheeks feel firmer. I don't feel any better. I can smell burning skin. <laughs> <laughs> I feel a ting all the way around here. I do feel tighter. What? You, you don't need that. Just have a shower or something. You don't want to go through that. What a waste of time that is. Girls, do you think we look uh, any tauter, any firmer, any more masculine? No. no. What? <laughs> What? <laughs> there you go. All that effort. <laughs> well, will you join me in saying thank you to the fabulous Mr Jack D, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh.